Hi everyone and welcome back to NTE. In this series of videos what I'm going to do is help you to answer show that questions successfully. Right? Now these type of questions are one of the most poorly answered questions in the math exam. Right? And they are also one of the most skipped questions in the math exam. Right? So I'm going to use three different so I'm going to use four different examples right, to show you how do you go about um, answering questions that have the instruction show that right. right. So whenever you see this instruction, right, you must have in your mind right, that there is going to be some sort of calculation involved right, that you have to go through in order to show the given result that they want you um, to go through. Right. Um, another tip that can help is to try to rephrase the question right in a different way by phrasing it as a, as a question instead of show that right so let's use this first example to illustrate what i'm trying to say the question says that show that the line y is equal to minus 3x plus 10 is a tangent to the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 10 right now we know that there is going to be some sort of calculation that we need to go through over here, right? And one way that we can identify what is that calculation that we have to go through is to try to rephrase this as a question, right? So what if the question simply said, find the equation of the tangent to the circle with this given equation, right? Then we know that if that was the case, right, then we would actually be given a point, right, on the circle, right, so that we are able to find the equation of a tangent, right, at that point, right, because we know that the fundamental thing about a tangent is that it touches any given curve, right, in this case our curve is a circle, right, it touches any given curve at one single point, right, so if we are able to show that these two equations, right, the circle and the straight line only meet at a single point, right, which is the crux of a tangent, right, then we are able to show that the line is tangent to the circle, right. So what we are really trying to do over here is to end up having this type of situation, which is centered at the origin, right, and is going to have a radius root 10, okay. But that is not really important to us right now, right? The important thing to us is that we are going to have a tangent to the circle right, at some point, and this tangent happens to have a negative gradient, right? So now we're just pulling out the details from this question. So it could be a tangent somewhere over here. And what we are realizing is that if we are able right, to show that these two equations only meet at a single point, right, then we have successfully right, proved or shown that this line, right, which has the equation y is equal to minus 3x plus 10, okay, that this line is tangent to the circle x squared plus y squared is equals to 10, right? So now that we know that what we are looking for is really the coordinates of this point, right? So we're looking for the x and y value there, right? And in fact, it's enough for us to just find the x value, right? So we just want one single x value, okay? If we find that one single x value, then we show that this line is tangent to the circle. Okay, so now it brings us to the question: How do we find right the point where two equations meet? Well, we do that by setting those two equations equal to each other, right? Which takes us into the area of simultaneous equations. Right. So now that we know what we have to do, we just go about carrying out the calculation. Right. So we're going to say let y is equal to minus 3x plus 10, right? Let this be our equation number 1, okay? And, right, x squared 
plus y squared equal 10. Let this be our equation number 2. Okay. So now that we know that we have to use simultaneous equations to solve this, it's very easy to now do the substitution of just this y in the place of y over here in the circle. Okay, so we're going to write out a little um, heading for our marker, right? And we're going to tell them that what we're doing now is we are substituting equation one into equation number two. Okay. So when we do that, we'll have x squared, right, plus this input of y, which has to be squared, and that has to be equals to 10, right? Now, what is this input of y? Well, it's this equation right here, minus 3x plus 10. Okay. Right, so now we see that we have an equation that is just in terms of x, which is good because now we only have one variable to solve for. Okay? But what is it about this that we now need to deal with? Okay, What is the algebra that we now need to deal with? Well, the algebra that we now need to deal with is this binomial squared that we just created. Okay, so that's something that we have to deal with in order for us to get to an answer right for x. Okay, so... We know that when we square out a binomial, right, we're going to have the first term squared, which is going to be minus 3x squared, which is going to give us 9x squared. Right, then we have the product of these two terms, so negative times positive is a negative. 3 times 10 is 30. 30 times 2 right, is going to be 60. So we have negative... 60, right, and then x times just the 1 is x. Okay. Then we're going to have this last term squared, right, so we're going to have 10 squared, which is a 100. And we can just now move this 10 to the other side, making it minus 10, and setting all of this equals to 0. Now we are in the position to collect like terms, right. So we're going to have 1x squared plus 9x squared, which is going to give us 10x squared. We're subtracting from this 60x, and then we have 100 minus 10, right, which is going to be plus 90. And all of this is now equals to 0. Right? But what can we do to simplify this even further? Well, we can divide through by 10. Right, so we can put right here on the side, what we're doing now is we're dividing through by 10. Right? So when we do that, this will reduce down to x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equals to 0. Right? Now, another thing that we can do is instead of solving this equation, right, we notice that this equation is a quadratic, right? So if we just evaluate the nature of roots of this quadratic, right, and we find that the discriminant works out to be zero, then we know that what we have is just one single point of contact between our tangent or this line because right now it's just a line right between this line and the circle right so right so we can move on and say call x squared minus 6x plus 9 right the discriminant is equals to well we're going to need our b value squared which is the negative 6 squared, right, minus 4 times our a value, which is 1, times our c value, which is 9. All right. 
So what do we have over here? Right. We've got negative 6 squared, right, which is going to be a value of 36. Then we're subtracting from this 4 times 1, which is 4, times 9, which is also 36. Okay. Now 36 minus 36 is equals to 0. Okay. So then therefore, because the discriminant is equal to 0, um, we know that that means that this quadratic over here right, only has one real root, okay? and thus therefore this line is tangent to the circle. Right? So that's one way that you could have shown that this line is tangent to the circle. Right? Another way, of course, would have been to be at this step over here to actually solve this equation, right? Um, that's also a valid um, thing to do, right? And if we go from this step and we solve the equation, right, we need to recognize that what we have over here is a perfect square trinomial, right? Which means that we can just factorize this into x minus 3 all squared, right? And this would have been equals to 0, right? Now, because we have this equal sign over here, right, we are allowed to take the square root of both sides, okay? And that will give us that x minus 3 is equals to 0, right? So 0 is never plus or minus, it's just 0, okay? So then therefore, x is equals to 3. Right, the x value right over here, at the point of contact, we now know is an x value of 3, right? And then you could conclude from this, right, if you took this step, right, this option, right, you could conclude that therefore one point of contact making this line tangent to the circle. Okay. Right, so that's the two different ways that you can go about answering this question, right? Um, either you take the route of using the discriminant or you take the route of just solving the equation itself, right? Either way, notice that in both cases, right, we don't, we don't just leave our answer, right, over here at discriminant is equals to zero or over here at x is equals to three, right? We don't just leave it over there. We always add a conclusion, right? Because you are the one writing the exam, you always have to explain what does the res what does this result, right, that you found, what does it mean or what does it imply, okay? Don't leave just the answers purely like that because if you do that, then it means that you are asking the marker, right, to make their own conclusion about what this result means, right? And it's not the marker that's writing the exam, you are writing the exam. So you have to then conclude what does the specific result that you obtained, what does that mean and how does it show that this is now a tangent to a circle, okay? So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something and I will see you next time.